cut my hair and I feel like it's very yeah. similar hair vibes. Bro, you, you have a little part of the, like the Poseidon hat. though. Yeah, dude, had to. Split it like the Red Sea, baby. It looks good. Right down the middle, the butt part, dude. Uh, I used to have really long hair, and it was like, I look back, and I just look like I'm Dude, this looks good. Wrong, you bro. already know I've seen your long hair face. Dude, dude, dude. it's bad. It looks a little bad. ratty, dude. It would look like, I look like a girl, I feel like, a lot of the time. Like, I guess always yeah. looking back, you, you see that, oh, I didn't like that or whatever, but I just look like moron in a lot of the pictures yeah i hear you you figured it out man this i'm cut trying is to mature nice. up the move to new york dude your net worth went up <laughs> with this cut dude for sure it's fire um all right so this is a special day because this is number uno podcast ever in the the studio the Universe podcast and we're joined more importantly by dean what's up everybody dean christensen i'm so honored to be here man. dude this i'm so am so too and we have a bunch to talk about because the way we met is super serendipitous yeah but first of all dean's an oil painter he's a painter he's an artist we're the same age right i'm 20- 28 okay i'm 26 you're okay, older close. all right we're pretty much the same age all right young man <laughs> sorry sir <laughs> but um so i'll tell i guess i'll briefly tell the story how we met is on july 4th 2020 mm-hmm. i broke my leg in a quad accident snapped it a few days later someone serendipitously just hit me up on instagram one of your followers and fans yeah saying hey have you heard of this kid dean yeah he also weirdly yeah broke his leg and i was like what okay let me check Dude. him out I can't wait to tell my version of this because it's like even more serendipitous. Yeah. And anyways, all right. So I was like, checked him out and we just like linked. We both absolutely mushed our legs. Yeah. Maybe we could put a a screenshot of both of our x-rays, but like terrible leg breaks, huge, crazy surgeries. Yours was probably worse than mine, honestly. Yeah. I I think five breaks. Yeah. I I was like just a straight chopstick in the tibia fibia, (laughs) but yours was like a fucking... Shattered. cannonball yeah <laughs> yeah i had a couple of bad ones i had the tibial plateau which is like the one you don't want like at the knee joint line dude yeah, i mean it seemed like i mean i shout out doctors bro because yeah your shit was i felt i mean i felt bad for myself and was down with the dumps but yeah you weirdly made me feel better oh dude big time your, man for your oh tragedy my, God, my freaking yeah. heart <laughs> yeah dude big time like it was dude i didn't have anyone to talk to i was at my parents house at the time which yeah. is already like kind of like a you're a grown man at your parents' house right, type of yeah, thing. Yeah. And uh, to not be able to walk and like need help going to the bathroom. And oh God, then I bro. hit you up and I was like, well, here's the thing. So yeah, run it back. Running it all the way run back. back dude. This is crazy. So it's so crazy. So I, I was going through like a hard time in my life mm. um, around like, I guess it was February, mm-hmm. like through a bad breakup and stuff. Okay. Went to Switzerland just to like lock myself in the studio at wow. my aunt's house, which wow. I called it a residency. Which, that's sick as hell. by the way, if you just go somewhere and yeah. paint, you can call I it mean, a residency. With, yeah, you're a real artist. That's anywhere you go is a residency. Yeah, residency. exactly. Um, which seemed super legit, but it was just my aunt's house. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, your videos like brought me so much joy. Oh, really? They like kept me focused, oh, you know? Yeah, I've seen probably every single one. Wow. And I don't know if you remember, but before the leg break thing, I reached out and I said something along the lines of, like, you're so grounded and not pretentious and it's so refreshing to see an artist. Wow, I don't even remember that. I Look think. through our messages, I man. I believe it's you, It's like though. before wow. the really? leg break thing. Yeah. How long before? Like, really long? Um, It was in like February, like wow. late February 2020. 20, no, 19? it must have been, yeah, it had to be 19, because we did yeah. 20, t- anyways, wow, that's yeah. amazing, yeah. So, and then the leg break thing, that same follower, shout out to him, I think his name was Haynes Rout. Yep, yeah, I yeah, think right? it was, yep, 100%. Um, so we grew up, like, next to each other, but kind of lost touch. Oh, really? Know, went our different ways, but, uh, yeah, so he reached out to me, and I had my DMs open, writing something up to you, uh-huh. and but I hadn't sent it yet, and then you sent it to me first, and really? I was like, oh, shit, like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? I was like about to press send and that's then you're crazy. like i heard you broke wow, your leg are is, you good yeah on the same day and everything dude because i was just like i you know i was in the turmoil of whatever but then i just saw and i saw that not only i mean weird that you know you happen to be another young adult that just weirdly had the same injury but that you're a painter that you're yeah. an awesome painter yeah that and then we Thank talked you. more obviously and we talked more and we have all this weird stuff in common like yeah. you studied at the artist students league where i was you were i think there for longer than me which is an atelier on 57th like a painting institution institution mm-hmm. and and just all the stuff you lived in brooklyn and you i think we had weird mutual friends or followers but it was just crazy and we just became 
internet yeah brothers. homies yeah so what did you do at the league were you taking like weekly classes yes or? so yeah. i um i was at parsons for one semester and then because i was like because i was at home for like four years in my old studio uh -huh. like doing art seriously but none of the youtube stuff picked up and so my mom was like you kind of got to figure something out. No shit. Right there. And right I was working there. at a restaurant full time. And I was like, all right, I love art. Like this was in like when I was getting serious about it. And I was like, yeah. I need to go to art school. Yeah. So naturally. I applied to Parsons. Got in. I was super lucky and happy and went there for one semester trying to be a fine artist, trying to yeah. paint with a fucking paintbrush. Sure. And did zero of that. Really? None of it, bro. Oh, actually, I totally feel Yeah, it. it's I like, and it's like a common thing. It's school. like conception theory, the business side of art or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and not actual painting. Even the one drawing class I did, the teacher was like, you know, like, come on, like, yeah. nothing. But um, so after the first semester, I was like, eh, made great friends. And I went back the second semester after the summer because I started in the spring. Mm. And in the second class of my second day of the second semester, I was like, nope, I dipped. And I just immediately after that class went to the Students Art League because I typed in art classes, yeah. signed up, <laughs> withdrew so from similar. Parsons without yeah. my mom knowing. Uh -huh. And just like started going there, and I went there from that fall, um, in like September to I think like April. So it was yeah. like nine months. And yeah. I did a painting class. I did a drawing class in the morning, and painting class at night. And I did that for about seven eight months. Yeah. Oh wow. So yeah. you were there way longer than me. Oh really? Let me just say, yeah. You did just a couple classes. I did. Yeah, two week long workshops. Yeah. Um, I think in like 2015. Um, oh, wow, you're there way early. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. But a similar experience, like, mm -hmm. I credit even just, I did those two workshops, like, so much of my kind of technical understanding of how to paint to those classes. Right. Like, learning under a master, 100%. like, such close proximity is, like, when you really uh, get, you know, totally. and good it's, information. It's, 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 like, night and day, dude. It's yeah. not only the instruction, obviously, but it's, like, the people you're around, like when I went in, like I had been painting and drawing on my own yeah. for like a few years pretty seriously. Like I took it pretty seriously and I was self-taught. But once I went there and just like people painting next to me that were amazing, yeah. like just literally looking at them, watching yeah. them load paint or how do everything. Exactly. It just like, it just skyrocketed my understanding and yeah. then it's just doing it every day, the exposure. Yeah. And it's funny, that's like frowned upon in art school. Like they know, want man. you to think about the concept more than the actual skill. It's like you can't execute a good concept unless you right. can, you know, say it in the language that you want to say it that's in. That's right. You know? <laughs> but dude, here's the thing, and I want to talk about more yeah. doing this is the last thing, but I uh, think the real distinct difference, which I've talked about also with other people, is like those ateliers are like it's it's not to become like a quote unquote artist you know it's like mm. you have you ooze creativity and that's like Thank something you, people don't have and but you don't go to that school to be or like an atelier there's also a grand central atelier. yeah yeah, yeah like yeah, you yeah. don't go there to become creative you go there to become a draftsman and to be right. able to technically yes. use oil paint and be able to represent yeah. reality and actually understand the you know, the theory of painting. Right. And so that's where I think some people lose is because they think they go there and they become amazing, you know, yeah. technical artists, but they sure. can't come up with conceptual, cool things that they want to do. So that's the yeah, separation. Yeah, big time, big time. There, yeah, I mean, it goes both ways. There really is kind of like a golden area mm -hmm. in the middle mm -hmm. where you want to be conceptual and have your own vision. But then, at least for me, I want to be able to express it. Exactly, in, yeah. You know, so you had you had ways. the golden ticket of like, you had all the stuff you want to do, which I think maybe some people don't, or it's vice versa, or like you, you see insanely talented people, but they can't do something on their own. I don't know, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's distinct. And I remember, I actually went to... Uh, I wanted to go to the Grand Street Atelier because YouTube wasn't working out and I had this decision to either stay in my old studio or go to that, the new Atelier. Because like the Grand Central one is a little more um, like hardcore curriculum. Like there's uh, an actual like four year program where yeah. it's like uh, Grand Sa or uh, stu the Students League. It's kind of just like do your on your own, mm. which I love. I mean, I was in love with that place, but mm -hmm. the guy was like grilling me. He was like, yeah, like you know, you're not here to be an artist. Like, yeah. this is just your training. You want the masters at your fingertips and you're just training nonstop. And I was like, geez, <laughs> like, chill, bro, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> trying to I learn. love painting. Yeah, and yeah. I want to do that kind yeah. of, but I, I right. love painting. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, yeah. I'm just trying to learn. It's funny how, like, artists 
their egos can kind of get. I know. Oh, it's, I think it's a lot of elitism in those. Yeah. And I get it, man. When I make a painting like that second day after I finish, I'm the shit, you know what I mean? In my head, I'm like, I can't believe I made that. (laughs) Dude, Sam, I'm like, I'm the best painter ever was. I know. When you make a good one. (laughs) And it's, and then I don't know if some is you. And then like a few days or weeks later, it's just like on to the next one don't yeah. even think about it oh, it's as yeah. if you just like you know buried your kid in the backyard yeah. or something. well it's like you it's almost like a coping mechanism yeah. like you can't let it like there's so many ups and downs you can't like really let it get to your head after a while yeah. like after you do that enough times because then the next time you start a painting you're like i'm never gonna top that last painting no 100 like, percent. Like, yeah. garbage. oh man you know the I mean? roller coaster and then putting it on youtube oh, dude yeah. like that whole extra layer yeah, of man. like vulnerability yeah, bro. It's yeah. That's I'm I'm eat better at that now. But it, it's yeah. It's it's just the it's like an ego trip and then a whatever adversity hell loop. I feel like with every painting that I do. I mean, do anyways. you read the comments and stuff? Oh, of course. Yeah, I read them all, and oh, they're God. mostly nice, man. Like yeah, I'm honestly yeah. like to be honest, everyone shows so much love, and it's really awesome. There's some. Pe- there was the funniest comment. Oh my God, my sisters always like <laughs> screenshot them when they're funny, and there was one where it was like, oh fuck, what was it? It was like. Because uh, I, I did the video actually with Christmas and it was like, I want to hire you. And it was yeah. like a blog. And I was like, email me if you're like a videographer, you want to work with me. And someone wrote like, why would I want to work for someone who looks like <laughs> they're from a family of like reptiles or oh. wizards or something? <laughs> <laughs> or like dark wizards. And I, it was really funny. And I was oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was you like, damn, to, like, that is that creative. Yeah, like, yeah. Kudos, heart. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, no, people are usually nice. Oh, that's. But enough yeah. about me. I want to talk yeah. about you because, yeah, cool, man. like I said, we became really good friends. But this is the first time meeting for people watching, and I don't know that much. So I want you to yeah. just like run it through because you're in Louisville now. Yeah, I is am, that where yeah. you're from? I'm from there. Yeah, born and raised in okay. Louisville, Kentucky. So the roots. And like, yep. what have you been doing? Because I've seen. I mean, we just are hopefully on the tail end of COVID, mm-hmm. but you've been like, I feel like killing the game. I've seen insane nft work Thank i mean you, super successful and maybe you can run through all of this but also you're doing all these crazy live streams yeah and you're, you're doing the clothing and you you seem to have like almost like a, a whole <laughs> team a squadron out there in your studio in and Louis, house yeah i got yeah. a nice little support system out there i mean can you just i mean elevate i just laid out so much yeah like, i know just, yeah i'll try i'll feel try free and to like, run through because yeah, i'm just trying I'll, to sure you know, get to know dude no I, I love it man so i'll start from the beginning please um so bringing it back to the art students league so Mm -hmm. i took two workshops there back in the day i think it was yeah like 2014 2015. Mm -hmm. then i did a month-long residency after a trip to europe okay at uh, it was called vitlich hill it was in upstate new york but it was through the art students league oh really so i I think i'm in like their pamphlet which is so badass right now Um, i think i have a pamphlet here oh yeah we should look through that'd be so crazy um but so during that residency i made a bunch of paintings that were referencing like the uh, Byzantine works that I saw in Europe. Whoa. Which were like just enormous, like painting myself as a deity, but like taking a selfie. <laughs> right. No, I see. Yeah. That's, yeah. And that's like a lot of your work. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm, yeah. I do like, so it's not a Dean Saatchi painting if I'm not in it. That's kind of like my, like I how I okay, sign cool. it, I guess, that's so awesome. to speak. Yeah. Um, so it started just like really grandiose. You know, I was like just, really pumped up to be in the art world like mm-hmm. as a professional mm-hmm. when I first started so these totally. are like six foot tall paintings of myself yeah, like huge. making like a double chin you know like taking a yeah. selfie like really unflattering yeah. you know <laughs> um but they ended up like doing really well and like winning awards and then they were uh featured in a show in New York in Brooklyn at the Shim Gallery wow dude um so that was kind of like my I guess uh, you know, drive to come here, like, yeah. oh, okay, like, this You're is so working. You're so legit, for sure. I mean, that was sick. So that's, that's already good. Sick. Um, so that was kind of the beginning of that, and then I just continued, you know, like, painting <laughs> selfies, you mm-hmm. know. It ended up kind of losing, you know, I guess, like, a little bit of, like, like you can only paint, like, a photo of yourself with a double chin so many times right, before it's yeah, like I guess. you know repetitive yeah. and boring right or you don't want to be the double chin guy yeah always. yeah exactly yeah, i see um but i was like you know getting eyeballs and stuff so i wanted a message mm-hmm. and so my message became like you know why are all these people looking at me like what can i bring to them and mm. it was eat broccoli enjoy life right okay <laughs> So that's so, like the narrative. That was like the yeah. basis of the narrative kind of thing. Yeah. Is that where like, the broccoli whole thing started? Right. The Brock League. The Brock League. Yeah. 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 So it's just people were paying attention and I was like, I, see, I cool. feel like kind of weird that they're just like coming 
for to see like pictures of my face like yeah. i don't really want to, everyone to think i'm just like mm-hmm. this narcissistic like psychopath you right. know? yeah um as so artists I just, are yeah i know no, right no, no, only yeah. like one day of the week yeah. you know um but uh so yeah, I just started encouraging people to eat broccoli. I can't remember the question. Maybe I should be more like... I just, I don't know, run it through. Keep going, baby. Yeah. yeah how you got to Louisville and... So, well, so that... But so you I had guess, success uh, with your gallery shows. Yeah. So and then you success. moved to New York because of that. I had success. I made a little bit of money mm-hmm. uh, off my first show in Louisville. I guess running it back further. So before I even had uh, work in New York, mm-hmm. I had a show called The Millennial Man, Me, My Selfie, and I. Holy shit. In Louisville. You're so cool. Nah, nah dude. That's you're, so legit, dude, dude. Your coolness I feel like gallery so shows are dead. Was, like, we're talking about, like, yeah. some relic thing. Yeah. Oh, that's a great conversation to have, too, yeah. because, I mean, they kind of are, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, and I have a show coming up, so maybe I shouldn't say that. Really? But Hell yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, my last show, um, Felt Cute, My Delete Later, was just we rented a space you know and you have full curatorial creative control this was in brooklyn this was in manhattan it was in the lower east side um that was october 2019 okay so i was yeah okay i guess i was around here but not yeah i mean it was it was cool like i i got a turf like an old football field yeah like four hundred dollars worth of turf, but Jeez. it was all like really shitty turf, you know, like, the whole floor. Yeah, yeah, wow. turfed out the whole floor. Well, that's what you gotta do. I mean, I wanted it to be like fun, and you know, we had the <clears throat> the ability to make it how we wanted, which you don't always have, like with a regular gallery. And I feel like that's way better, especially like I mean, I haven't done that. I've never had a show or been in that world, but what, from yeah. what I can see, it's like you don't have a lot of freedom if you're like in that big world, but to do it on your own, to have your pop-up, like in my eyes, that's the way I, that's the only way I would do it. If I wanted to yeah. show my work, like your work would do much better that way. Yeah. And I just feel like your control, the way you yeah. want to show it or whatever narrative you're trying to yeah. do. It's like, it's like, yeah, I, I think that that's I mean, that definitely the cooler, route that, yeah. and I wouldn't be doing my show. I have a show in July called Wet Dreams, which wow. is all the paintings that I just did during quarantine. Yeah. That are like me doing crazy things Jeez. that I was just dreaming of, you know, while I was... Busy uh, man. Was very, yeah, very bored in yeah. <laughs> quarantine. Um, but uh, I wouldn't do that if I couldn't, like, do it how I wanted. Yeah. Like, there are galleries that will kind of let you have creative control. Uh-huh. Um, and they're my homies, you know. That's right. where I had my first show. The so, Stomping yeah. Grounds. That's great. That's awesome. Because... I like once tried to like show my work and gave it to this like gallerist and then even actually my plan before the year of the leg smashing, yeah. <laughs> like my, my whole master plan was to do this move here eventually, mm. but like in 2021, which is now, but before the summer before I wanted to do like a pop-up gallery show to like put my foot in the door and to be in New York before my ne- like big move the next year. Yeah. But COVID obviously happened, but that was like my plan. Exactly what you kind of said. I mean, I don't think anyone was trying to represent me. I did totally try to send my shit out to like a decent amount of people. I even mm. met with this like really big gallery, but they just like, you know, they're like, oh, girl, rah, rah, yeah. and didn't do anything. Yeah. But like, I was so gung ho about like renting my own space, having enough for yeah. maybe two weeks and like just doing it all on my own, making a shitload of content about yeah. it, and just getting people hyped. But it didn't happen. But that was like totally what I wanted and seemed so fun. I mean, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's overrated, honestly. Yeah. Like it's there's so many hoops and like politics behind the curtain, so right. to speak. It's like, you know, doing it yourself and getting a team of people you trust and you like. I mean, I guess it's some, it, it took me to do it to mm. feel like kind of, I mean, not even really do it. Like my show, my biggest like gallery show was the one in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's like the the ceiling isn't so high. Yeah, you know, and you're just in the <laughs> but middle. But that's of still, I mean, it's your show. Uh, I mean. But yeah, well, it did feel good to kind of check that box. Yeah. And then I worked at a gallery here in um, in the Lower East Side for a couple months, so I saw everything behind the curtain. I was like an art yeah. handler, and it's like you know, it's so much politics, and mm. like a lot of times people will buy a painting and they just leave it in storage. It's like tax evasion almost. That's crazy. People don't know that side of it, man. No, it's I do like, know that, that it's, ta- yeah. it's It's like you write it off. Well, you buy it and you can resell it at the same or a higher price. Right. So like you don't, it's like when people go overseas, like you could buy, you know, an Andy Warhol for $2 million if you're like really rich. Right. And then you yeah. have that money, like that stored value. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. then, you know, tax season's over, you resell it and yeah. then you have $2 million. So you don't have yeah. to pay taxes on it. And people do that for your shit? 
No, dude, I wish, bro. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm so not on like, that level even bro, close, dude. But like, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get. But that's right? like you're saying the shady. Yeah, there's like yeah. a lot of that, that undercurrent. Like Jerry Saltz talked about it in his book, and I wish I could remember exactly, but there's like 53 people, I think, that are like really in charge of like pulling the strings in the art yeah. world on like the big level, yep. you know? Mm-hmm. You know, like the MoMA, you know? The yeah, big, Christie's the big and those people yeah. or like the whatever, yeah. The, all the auction houses. Rothschilds. Yeah, exactly. Fuck them. Fuck the Rothschilds. No, maybe not. Hey, if you're listening, <laughs> we're some artists that are up and coming. No, we need more beef, dude. We need more haters. Yeah, Come no, on. you're right. Honestly, Honestly, what are they going to do? It. Dude, we're, our videos online are getting 20 times the amount of eyeballs that your stupid galleries are getting. That's actually the right mentality, gang, I bro. think. Yeah, that's some gang shit. No, but that's dude. what I think. I'm, yeah. It's obviously not true. Those big guys yeah. are just like, they are ruling the world. But that's what makes me... <laughs> you say ruining the world? Ru- ruling. Oh, ruling. <laughs> but also ruining. It's a little both. I mean, the yeah, double-edged sword of... Yeah, it's it runs deep, it's, you know? People always ask me, and my younger sister actually is in like, works for a big gallery. She's younger. She's like internship, and she loves the art world and our conservation, our history. But like, people ask me, or they think I know. I'm so removed from that. Yeah, like, I have no experience. Yeah, I'm like I literally really fucking, glad you said that. <laughs> I'm like a recluse. Yeah, in my old studio now here, just like with an internet connection. You know, like I paint a lot, and obviously these paintings don't paint themselves, yeah. and the videos don't edit themselves, and I'm working. But it's like uh, there is no, I have not even a percentage experience yeah. with any of that. So it's well, like, dude, numbers don't lie. You know, and I think that's like what makes you so perfect for the space you're in. Because the second people start name dropping and, yeah. you know, getting too deep into right, that, it, yeah. there's like a disconnect. Sure, and yeah. There's and like a pretentiousness. Yeah, the, it, social media is quantifiable in yeah. that sense. But it's also, it's like under your control. And it, and that's like why I think it's so great. It's like there's so many talented people. The nepotism of the real art world seems just demonic. And like if you're a talented person, yeah, you need to work little to make videos and put out content. But right. there's... A almost unlimited amount of eyeballs for people yeah. to see your work, you know, and that's where yeah. I love it. And like, I've been able to capitalize on it. It's not even that many, like compared to bigger YouTubers, but it's like, I can show my work and now I can make money yeah. through just showing my work, you know, and it's yeah. not, it's never touched a gallery, but it's like, that's why I try, even you, we were just saying, it's yes. like, you know, I mean, c- the idea of content, social media, yeah. it, like what I struggle with is like, I, I don't want people to take me less seriously as an artist because yeah. I make these videos or I'm vlogging oh, and like talking to camera. This is where everything is headed. Yeah, but you, know, you, but you know what I mean. It's yeah, like, I do. I, yeah. I, I want to be an artist first. Yeah. And like, obviously, I lo- I'm super passionate about videos and like, mm-hmm. it's another creative outlet, but like, I don't want to be a YouTuber making art. You know, I'd rather be an artist making YouTube videos, if that makes sense. So that's yeah. something I struggle with. I mean, the, it's great for viewership, but it's yeah. like that balance. I think, well, two things. I think YouTube is an art, and I know that's like, No, I, compl- I agree. You know I, mean, I mean, I'm a YouTuber, too. I believe, bro. And, but, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Ice in my veins, baby. Sheesh. Sheesh. No, I feel you, dude, but I'm just... And, and I also want to say that I see you very much as, like, an artist first, and I'm sure your viewers feel the same Thanks, way. Bro. I mean, dude, you kill it, and you care about learning fine oil painting oh, art. You know what I mean? I That's those. like a lost art, yeah, dude. Yeah. You're you're like really genuinely trying to learn like a traditional mm-hmm. medium from like the Renaissance. Yeah. You know, it's like you too. No, well, yeah, but that's I mean, we're a rare breed, dude. You know? I know. And it's like when when people see that, they, there's like a level of respect. Of yeah, like, I think so. You know, for sure, because like everyone, like the the idea of being a painter. And this could be another rabbit hole I don't want to go down. But, like, I I really think that, like, the 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 kind of, like, schedule lessons that uh, the atelier we went to, how you line up. And, like, I would never rip on anyone. Anyone who does anything creative, I want to champion. It would Me never too, back down for yeah. sure. But I do think that, like, you got to give credit where credit's due to, to learn and to study. And like, there's obvious differences between people's skill level. Again, I'm not saying anything could be good or bad. It's mm-hmm. just like when you learn how to paint in, in a way that's through tradition and uh, an obviously successful version of doing something that mm-hmm. can be done a, a million different ways, you know, it's like, it's rewarding to look at that, understand it, but also to do it. 
And yeah. I don't know if I made any sense right there. hundred percent made like, sense. Yeah. It's, it, I, I, I love the tradition. I love that yeah. it's like a language that yeah. I'm so bad at that I know that I can improve and oh, like forever improve. A hundred percent. To speak that language. Yeah. You know? And that people are like, hey, you know what? That is a wrong sentence. You're yeah. using that wrong grammar yeah. right there. No, it's, you know? it's about because, structure. Exactly, because like, there needs to be some sort yeah. of reference to the correct thing. And again, yeah. there's not good or bad art. Yeah. There's not right or wrong. I would never say that. Yeah. But like in the system of naturalistic painting or yeah. traditional oil painting, yeah. I like that framework. I Yeah, it shows, man. You know, like you you're diving into something that's going to keep you occupied for yeah. the rest of your life. It's like it becomes part of your existence. Yeah, and it's like a forever, like even the most masterful people, they're still fucking learning and trying. And it's yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Everyone could always get a little bit better. Totally, and it's just know? it's so vast, like color theory. And maybe we could go into tech um, later because I want to ask you questions. I love yeah. to ask because, dude, it's so funny. Like, I know some painters, mm. but not really. And like... The some I do know, they're like mm, very far out there or like Same. they're way older than me. Same, dude. Like you're the first person I met who's like my age, yeah. who's like pretty freaking normal dude, that's and That's why I was cool. so drawn to you, man. I was like, I was I've like, never had a conversation with another yeah, painter yeah. or like an oil painter. Yeah. And so it's awesome. And Yeah. And yeah. I get it. I mean, a lot of artists, I feel like I expect them to be really kind of withdrawn. Yeah. Because it's such a vulnerable thing to begin with that, you know, you don't want to put it out there. Like my artist friends that are people I really look up to, most of them, they kind of like fell off after college, mm. you know, and they just want to be, you know, pigeonholed in their studio. Yeah. And that's great, you know, but it's, it's, it's upsetting that like, if they were to have the confidence, I guess, to put their stuff out there, like they would be surpassing, totally. you know, like so yeah. many people that are just more business minded, kind mm. of like just whipping stuff up and, you know. Yeah, man, I hear you. But that's another thing. They don't really teach you, like, business. No, not at all. In school. No, not at all. And that's, like, I think that's the biggest separation between being, like, not successful or just actually monetizing work. It's, like, again, like, if the if the, if the um, equation was just work really hard and become really skilled, you know, there would be countless more people successful. Yeah. It's, like, that's, right. like, almost like a baseline. And then you yeah. need the personable skills. Then you need the business savviness. And you need all these other, like lucky situations to get in the door and other things so it is totally a tricky situation yeah it is it's i feel like comparable to being an actor mm -hmm. you know where oh it's for like, sure That's i mean analogy. i wonder the the percentage of artists that actually are able to like pay their rent totally with their art. yeah actually, i mean i can't imagine it. and that's really why like i like i'm like currently you know, Mac Miller quote, like, it's hard to have a dream when you're deep inside of one. Yeah, like, I'm living... <laughs> Me too. R.I.P. I yeah. love Mac Miller. R.I.P. Yeah, I just threw that down real hard. Yeah. <laughs> no. right, man. But, like, I'm living, like, I'm really lucky to be in here. But I remember, like, I don't think I ever, ever thought that I would mm -hmm. be able to financially sustain myself with selling my paintings. Yeah. And, yeah. like, for people who don't know, maybe even you don't know, like, of the money and the income I make less than 15% is selling artwork. Yes, yeah, same, same. And most of it is ad revenue or sponsorships. Yeah. And it's like not actually selling yeah. the artwork. I think it's good to talk about this. Yeah, stuff. for sure. And people, we, don't, people don't talk yeah. about money in the arts and it's like, it's you gotta kinda know what you're in for. Totally. And, you and know, take some business classes, yeah. you know, kinda learn the back end of totally. things a little and bit. And I try to really talk about it in my YouTube channels, like social media and like, pick up a video camera or learn how to edit because like the the opportunity on social media for anything playing soccer mm -hmm. you know sneaking onto cruise ships whatever the fuck <laughs> it might be yeah 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 like there's an audience for that yeah, there's a yeah. niche for the we anything literally yeah. anything no doubt man and then if you gather those like-minded people and you make m videos i mean it's obviously easier said than done but right um, yeah, the notion of just selling my paintings, like, I, I never thought that. I don't think I even will, even yeah. if I continue, whatever, growing, like, yeah, it's just something I've never been in. So I think the key, like you were saying, is somehow diversify your creative outlet. Uh, yeah, and I think so. I do. mean, you know how many dog portraits I do, like, yeah. that I don't show anybody, yeah, you nice. know, like, my DM is full of, like, will you paint me? And sometimes yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm in a rough spot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I got you. Oh, this yeah. time. No, but that's um, great. People like that. Yeah, you know, and I like to make people happy and everything like that. It's not stuff that I make for myself, you yeah. know? It's, like, commissions that are, 
always a, like an interesting back and forth. Like yeah. people never really know what they want. Right. And then you, I'm sure you've been down that road. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, you got to pay the bills and I just try and stay grounded. Like sometimes I do not like making commissions. Oh, like really? I'm borderline, like I'll go 30 minutes and I'll be like, I don't want to do, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like, God, it's, it's really like busy work. I hear you, know? you bro. Yeah. Um, but still hit me up for commissions. Hey, you know yeah, what I no, mean? You got like, the best dog but still dog. like, you know, I got to pay the bills. So sometimes. speaking of art, I want to switch it to, because you are in the NFT game Yeah. and you had a oh, bunch yeah. of success. It's a great segue. And I, segue. I've been following you obviously since we've been friends last summer. It's almost been exactly a year and I've been trying to follow along, but I still, yeah. I feel like I see all these little live streams or these yeah. little horse races with <laughs> yeah. Carol the tiger legging. Ta- yeah, yeah, my girl Carol, dude. I'm like, what is he doing? Yeah. So could, how did, first of all, you were, I mean, people probably know NFTs by now. It's like a big thing in the art world. Uh-huh. I haven't really gotten into it, but Dean has had a lot of success. success and you were also, I feel like, very early on in it. Yeah. Like weirdly. Yeah, well, I, I can't even take credit for that. Um, it is my buddy Rex. Shout out to my boy Rex, hey, Rex. Wallace. Hit me up. Um, yeah, Rex. Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah, we could all link up. I wanted him to come with me and yeah. just meet you and everything. Um, but he's in Indianapolis. But he, um, so he made a bunch of money. I don't know if he wants me to disclose the amount, but mm-hmm. he basically like 100x his money on uh, NBA Top Shot, which is an NFT platform. Yeah. He's in like the top you know, 1% or something like that. That's crazy. Yeah. And um, he had reached out to me about NFTs before and just like everyone else, Mm -hmm. before he like had any success. Yeah. And just like anyone else, I was like, no one's going to buy a JPEG for thousands of dollars. You know, it makes no sense. Says you. Yeah, I know. It says everyone that doesn't understand. Yeah, 100%, you know. And so I didn't get it and I just kind of wrote it off, you know. Yeah. Then he came back and was like, look. Look at my account. Look at the numbers. Jeez, really? And I was like, oh, okay. This but was, is so real. He, he was doing paintings or he was just no, doing so JPEGs? He, so, okay, so this platform, NBA Top Shot. Yeah, I, I know, kind of know what it is, but I just. Yeah, so he, he just bought, he, he doesn't create NFTs really. Mm-hmm. Well, until he met me, um, he just bought a bunch of, it's basically digital playing cards, right. if you know, uh, like of, you know, LeBron. So he just had dunk. the J, JPEGs. He bought them all really cheap. Oh, okay. So someone had already minted them yes and he owned them okay right so yeah so to explain it all like like even more simple i guess like yeah you have all these Mm pre-minted trading cards basically at the beginning of the existence of this platform nba top shot everything was like five dollars i understand so he increased the hype no he he just bought them and then they ended up going up oh but because of the hype of nfts in general that's what Mm -hmm. i'm saying yeah yeah exactly like he alec okay i'm sorry i'm trying i'm not trying to confuse no you're good i get i i'm i'm like actually well versed in the crypto game i've been holding for a while i'm just trying to understand Mm. and making it way too confusing no i know i'm I'm also like i'm just really stuck on this thing but so so moving (laughs) on so he so he um he hit me up and was like i think that you know since i have this you know, community of NBA Top Shot people that know mm-hmm. of my success. If you were to make a uh, NFT of the CEO of Top Shot dunking oh, a basketball, wow. then that would probably do really well. Um, so we painted Roham Gargazlu, wow. his face, on, I think it was Blake Griffin's, like, full arm dunk. You know? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, just, like, so epic. I remember epic. all the paintings you yeah. did, yeah. And, well, I guess we could... Put that yeah, in there. we'll, we'll um, probably throw a screenshot. And, uh, you know, just put ridiculous numbers on there. We put it in the top shot format mm-hmm. and made it like $125,000. Just like, you know, for the, you know, creativity of it, just mm-hmm. threw random numbers in to mimic that like format. And uh, we sold 100 of them in like, for like, I think like 0.05 ETH mm-hmm. or something like that. So it was like 100 bucks a piece. That's crazy. And uh, we were like, what the, f- what is going on? And you you're know? like, whoa. Yeah. And, and so you had that, no expectations, really? You're just like, oh, I'll do we, this painting. Because it was a big painting. Like, honestly, you put in a lot of work to that like painting, Everything right? in the NFT game was, like, really buzzing at yeah, the time. Dude. So we were like, no matter what we do, like, we'll get some sales. Wow. And, like, with his uh, NBA Top Shot stuff, yeah. we could always, like, give away moments. Because he sure. had all these moments. So, like, 
you say, you know, we're giving away a, I think we gave away a John ja Morant, and I know nothing about basketball. I, I can't really believe either, I yeah. remember that thing. <laughs> Good for you. But it was like a thousand dollar moment, like, you know, like and retweet and buy this, and then one of the lucky oh, people get it, you know I what see. I mean? So we kind of like wow. had a game plan. Yeah. Um, and his job before was in like PR and things like that, so like he had like all the tools to make it happen, mm -hmm. you know? So we uh, did that, and then transition from that to painting nft top shot moments of like some big players in the game mm. and we just like paint them dunking basketball and then i paint myself in yeah the no i think <laughs> that was the best part the selfie yeah. but then you were saying that's almost like your signature i now. have to it's yeah, like it's have some integrity i love thing, that dude you know? i love that yeah. it's like yeah a signature or just your mark and your stylistic but also yeah. it's like a very uh pop culture like everyone's on their phone i don't know like 100 for you no but, exactly right yeah like, that's how it started that's why i want to yeah. keep that energy of being like the millennial man, me, myself, and I. Yeah, and then of, also in terms of the people who want to collect that art, it's like, okay, this is Dean, right? Like, this yeah. is obviously a Dean. You yeah, know? exactly. Like, there's some sort of maybe other narrative going on here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so you did how many after this first CEO, Blake Griffin? So we did that one. We sold 100 of the, we called it the Roham Slam. Mm. Then we did, um, oh man, I'll try and remember their names, Pete Overzet. Shout out to Pete Overzet, Luke Doucette, um, Usman, Jeez, can't remember his Patel, um, and this lady, Katie Tedman, which was the, um, I'm doing the name dropping thing. That I'm That's like, amazing, <laughs> bro. But anyway, so yeah, all of them, we did moments of them. That's they're like big players in the game. I know. They were kind of fun. I mean, I could knock them out in like two days. Dude, that's another thing. So. You can paint so fast, I feel oh, like, Oh, thanks, bro. dude. Like, thanks. how much titanium white do you use in a so day, much, bro? dude. Oh, my God. I you use that more than... You can paintings, any. man. Yeah, dude, thank it's you. amazing. Yeah, and I mean... And you all Ala yeah. Prima stuff? Like, do you, you yeah. don't work in like dry layers, really? Yeah, I do all Ala Prima. Yeah, that's when crazy. I'm wet. And you grid it out? I project. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that helps speed it up. Big time. But still, bro, like mixing all that paint, like, yeah, you're a little factory, bro. Yeah, you That's know, insane. like, insane. I feel like teaching, well, being in New York for four years and like having to crank stuff out mm -hmm. was kind of like part of that. And then also teaching classes where like you have to teach a beginner how to make a painting. So mm. like it really trained my brain to like deconstruct the layers. Bro, and think about I it know kind what you mean. Like mathematically. I think you're right. I do a little with that with my videos or yeah. like even live streams. I'm trying to spell it out and yeah. it helps me. Yeah. Like you said, deconstruct yeah. whatever, but yeah. Um, wait, to go back. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Cause no, I want to talk. Man. I think the NFT is relevant. And I also, oh, yeah. I was trying to get it. A million people were trying to hit me up being like, dude, NFT, like, yeah. you're blowing up. Yeah. Let's get rich. Yeah, I was like, I fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, exactly. like, I'm trying to <laughs> sign me up. But I was so busy with like this move. And yeah. like, I had like, I was raising money for this place. It was a logistical nightmare. It was, yeah. it was awesome. But I was literally probably the busiest I've ever been in my life. And I mm -hmm. kind of missed the wave. Yeah. But I want to know how it like changed your opinion on all that because you clearly made some money. You don't have to mm. say how much. I know you were successful with it. And it was just like, it seemed like an entirely new realm for yeah. everyone, but including yourself as an artist who also, I mean, just said was in the gallery game, has been around the block a little like that. Like, so what are you thinking moving yeah. forward? What is, like, are you trying to do that from now on? Is it something you don't want to do again? Let's sell my paintings twice. <laughs> yeah, of course, dude. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I've been through the trenches, you know, it's hard to make money as an artist totally. and every time artists are making money to any capacity, yeah. I'm like, all support, all True. love, do I what you got to do. Yeah, I back that. Um, and you know, the only hiccup was like the environmental thing Yeah. and that <clears throat> freaked me out. But actually all that stuff is changing. Like in the NFT world, they kind of explain why things are headed in a different direction mm. a little more and they're more like, you know, I guess pro environment yeah pro environment than you would think yeah. um but um but yeah i mean of course like i'm definitely gonna mint all the paintings in my upcoming show wow. as well That's and awesome. then try and get some sales out of that um but it's it's already i will say like it was a huge bubble everyone knew that totally. going in yeah, well at I least so. i did you yeah. know like something isn't that hyped yeah. forever no you know, totally. people like a layman who started painting like last year yeah. could suddenly make like 400 grand yeah. and you're like okay this isn't gonna like they don't have the tools to keep this sustainable yeah. i mean it's just um, yeah it seemed like a crock pot of yeah i mean craziness it, yeah yeah i mean a lot also, of a lot like of bad said, art too totally <laughs> you know, i mean but, uh, yeah you know. a couple of my friends who are like digital 
like 3D animators and they were trying to, cause there's, I mean, there's obviously the different platforms like Nifty, mm -hmm. um, Super Rare, Rarible, like those yeah. are, I feel like the big ones mm -hmm. where if you get somehow featured on there, like during that pop, you were making hundreds of thousands. Yeah. If you oh, were I on the front so page, to <laughs> me too, my friends tried to get me and I didn't even yeah. have anything ready to mint or anything, yeah. but. Oh, even these, man, you can mint anything. Yeah, like, I was trying to do all of this shit. I was just like literally so busy. I yeah. I, I just wasn't prepared. So I yeah. maybe in the next pop, I'll just, I'm going to steal Rex. Oh, yeah. Yo, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get you in contact. But, and um, me, dude, like I have somewhat of a handle on it. That's awesome. Yeah, because like, that's like, I feel like the one the mediumly kind of hard thing to maneuver. It's like this whole minting process, the yeah. gas fees, and just we, yeah. the weird red tape back end. It's a little confusing, and that's maybe what removed me mm -hmm. instantaneously from it. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, so like you released on a, the, the, the NBA Super Somethings. Mm. <laughs> I forgot what it was called. Nailed it, dude. <laughs> the NBA, NBA Super Somethings. Which is its own platform. <laughs> no, so I released on OpenSea. Oh, which so is it like was a, on OpenSea. It, it's considered, I think, like the Walmart of I platforms. Know OpenSea. You know, yeah, you know. Okay. But so that those so all of Rex's things were on that also. So so <clears throat> Rex's things are on NBA Top Shot. So they're all like it's like a centralized platform. So they're all kind of locked in. Okay. Like you buy and you sell and you get flow tokens instead of real money. Okay. And then you have to or maybe it's not flow tokens, it's dapper balance, I think is what it's called. Mm. And then you withdraw it into USD. Yeah, okay. And you know it's a whole thing but so that was all he didn't create any of those nfts he just owned nfts that really went up in value and then he resold and then he had all this dapper balance so but he had a lot of hype with the nft crowd that followed the top so what stuff. i'm saying is it's hard mm -hmm. like you still sold a lot but i feel like that the hardest part was to get people to go to OpenSea or go to the platforms yeah. because like mm -hmm. there are it's just like the art world it's like it's it's now reflecting the art world more parallel yeah because like the big galleries no matter what's on the wall if it's yeah. a piece of shit or a banana hanging yeah. with some tape <laughs> if it's yeah. in that enclave of the big gallery yeah fucking glue sniffing rich people will be like well i want this yeah yeah, and yeah as long yeah. as it's on the platform and now it seemed like mimic like you're saying yeah. like my digital friends are saying all this shit garbage yeah. artwork digital stuff <laughs> that people can make in like a couple seconds i'm not yeah. trying to rip on people yeah, yeah. but you know Let's step it up at the same time <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying so it's like it's just it's just like mimicking almost the real mm -hmm. world where it's like if you're just nepotism you get onto nifty yeah you're gonna yeah. make some money or something yeah so that that was just because it was all so new mm -hmm. and it was like the hype was just like way too hot you know? <laughs> but now it's like reflecting like you kind of need to yeah. go through hoops and need uh -huh. to, there's you know like barriers of to entry a right. little more so yeah now so i mean it's still a good idea to get into it the one thing that sets you apart now is having some type of utility mm. like for instance if like you could set it up to where someone can see your patreon videos if they own a certain wow. nft of yours yeah so that is totally an amazing avenue that the nfts can provide that's so yeah. true i didn't even think like mm. weird access things yeah or, exactly wow yeah that's crazy mm -hmm. i think that's what like i think my my dream was if I wanted to, I wanted to do an NFT where it was like, there was an original that was like one of one. Yeah. Like an NFT and mm -hmm. then, or no, maybe like uh, the artwork itself, like you mint it, mm -hmm. you get the original JPEG or whatever, and then mm -hmm. you get the actual canvas. Yeah, and then there were the physical, like a yeah. hundred edition or something like yeah. that of the other ones. I think I, I like that where it was like, a uh, tangible piece and then also like um a digital like Beeple did that like his crazy right. cool like, didn't he give like real like prints yeah, of his little, things uh, yeah he had these cool little stands that like yeah. held the the jpeg They're cool like shit. led screen is super cool i thought it was cool as fuck i yeah. was like that's cool but the whole patreon thing access i think i mean people are doing crazy things like album covers or like albums of music like mm -hmm. that's crazy bro mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's where it's going. I mean, our, what we're working on now, I'll just leak it. I guess this is kind hey, of a good time to slew, leak slew. it. This, probably, this podcast uh, probably won't come out for like two months. Honestly. Oh, okay. Sick. I'm trying so, to stockpile. Yeah, cool. And release cool. August. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, man, I love it. So this is perfect, <laughs> yeah. dude. Okay. So we just came out with Sorry this thing. Sorry to drop that. Yeah. This will never air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's great, dude. I love that. Um, so yeah, what we're working on now, which is probably out by now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if so it's, check it out. Um, is uh, we're, we're calling it uh, Broccolites. Broccolites. And they're oh, going to yeah. be like these kind of like, we're going to mint, you know, my broccoli character mm -hmm. and uh, in different colors and things like yeah. that. And then 
from my understanding, it's going to be, we have a game developer that we're working with, and it's going to be a situation where your broccoli can kind of evolve when you feed it broccoli. Like Holy we'll create shit. like kind of like a broccoli token. Holy and crap. you don't know what's going to happen, but you, you buy it and you don't know what it's going to evolve to, but then you keep feeding it the broccoli Holy and then mackerel. it kind of turns into something else. So it's like, you inv gets people invested in, I guess, the long game of owning the NFT. Wow, it's like a Brock Tamagotchi. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah. That's so cool, man. See, like, that's so, like, that's just beyond what normal people think of, like, or what this digital asset now can, like, you know, do. <laughs> Brock it's a sorry. <laughs> that's like, Brock, there's something there actually. That's like Brockagachi. Brockagachi or something. But yeah. that's a, that's so smart to keep people yeah. invested, and that's crazy, man. Yeah, wow, I mean, that's there, very there cool. People, I can't take credit for that. You know, sure. there are people doing like someone just released a bonsai plant. Whoa. And you buy it, and then you kind of watch it grow. Dude, I've heard a lot of. I mean, there's like real estate things. You could develop land. Yeah. I mean, it is wild. That's crazy, man. So, but do you have to have get like you have to have like back end coders and people doing all this shit because that sounds um, like a kind of a it's a lot of it's easier than you would think. Really? Like you, like there are platforms like this guy who we did a podcast with, Andy something I don't know his last name. Mm. He started a fractionalization <laughs> uh, company thing, and uh, so what you do is you can own like one fifth of like a crypto punk. Yeah, I know the crypto punks. Yeah. So yeah, a lot yeah. of times, like, there are these companies that kind of, you just, you know, get your stuff involved in the company and they do, like, the back end for you. It's right. not like you need, like, all hands on deck. Yeah. That would be cool to have. That'd mm -hmm. be more efficient. You know, that'd be better. But, um, <laughs> yeah, you can always reach out and do the stuff if you have the idea yeah. and just have that, the drive to crazy. make it happen. Wow. Yeah, NFTs, man. The yeah, future. it's bizarre, man. It's a weird world. And also the, just the Depop. I mean, we're recording in uh, June, the beginning of June, and recently the Ethereum dropped a shitload. And so, I mean, that has to affect people's, you know, ideas of buying with Ethereum. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's how weird it is. It's because, like, the dollar value has always been, like, the dollar value. But, you know, your, your, your uh, NBA players who sold for that much Ethereum, you know, like, it, yeah. it decreased in value. The oh, had, dude, technically, I'm right? in the trenches like, right now. Oh, me too, bro. I've been holding Ethereum <laughs> yeah. for a few years. And yeah, my, me too. Uh, my faux 401k is just in the shitter. Yeah, yeah, big no, time. But it's fine. But yeah, it, I kept that's all my why money it's weird, crypto, I think, because it's yeah, like that. It's super should, volatile. Right? I'm, but, I'm a believer. You should. Yeah, hold. me too. Me too. I mean, at the end of the day, diamond hands. Like <laughs> <laughs> diamond hands, the door. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, hold that Doge. No, I don't know shit. I'm literally just like regurgitating <laughs> yeah, my friends yeah. who are like in the crypto world like two years ago. Oh, like, are just like, yeah, dude, buy some, just hold it for fucking oh, ever. I'm like, I mean, good. well, <laughs> the one thing that resonates with me, and I, I'm an idiot, you know what I mean? Like, like too, I full disclosure, shit, like, I, I just regurgitate shit too. But the one thing that re like resonates with me is, uh, money is fiat currency, mm. which means that it's not backed by anything. Right. Like, I think it was FDR that took away the gold standard yeah it was with gold but not anymore yeah the so they just keep united printing states is on more. a credit card bro. so that's like the biggest bubble ever like oh, they yeah. just keep printing more money mm -hmm. you know without it being tied to anything mm -hmm. and then you have crypto which is tied to digital scarcity so it actually is certifiably scarce yeah, yeah. so it's like a a genuinely better format for currency totally um so i you know, I think it's inevitable that it all rises. And if you look at like even small coins, like they all kind of rise as long as you just like keep your hands no, off. Totally. You know? And I think just the technology, uh, this decentralized ledger of it, like it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. The only question is, is like us literally hippy dippy artists talking about finances. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's, like, <laughs> it's whether or not like the United States, like the government will be like, we're going to do our own coin or somehow control it, even though it's uncontrollable. Yeah. That's the yeah, great thing yeah. about it. They're going to find some way to yeah. just like, I don't know. Fuck oh, us with taxes or something. Uh -huh. Like that's something people don't understand. Like the capital gains of things. Like because yeah. I've with I withdrew last year and I had to do all that shit with my account and then I was kind of like, this sucks, man. Sucks. Yeah. And some people are like trading, and buying, and selling every day. It's like, bro, you're gonna get hosed. Yeah, yeah. Some well, I think if you keep it in crypto, you're good. You know, but if yeah, you no, no, withdraw, no, yeah. <laughs> once you put it in your yeah your yeah. bank account, you kind of yeah. yeah um, That's also why I kind of want it to be all in crypto. Like, yeah. you know? no, it's true. No, I think it's good. I told even my sisters to try to get into it, but we'll see. Yeah. How long have we been going, Chris? 
48 minutes. Oh, we're chilling. Oh, wow. I thought, this I is know. going by fast. I know. I've been blacking out. I love this, bro. It's so fun. <laughs> also, know. you haven't took your headphones off. It's like state. so crazy taking oh, off. Oh, is it? I don't even know if I want to do it. Yeah. Hey, dude. Oh, my God. It's so loud in yeah, here. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, All like the echoes and everything. <laughs> yeah, what's up, dude? Yeah. Oh, dang, dude. Yeah. Got my butt part flexing on him. <laughs> right? Love it, it's man. It's very, um, yeah, it's kind of like very sensual. Dude, your haircut, by the way, I mean, sexy, kind of, man. I'm trying. It's a little yeah. crease balled out, but. We talked about how he was looking a little ratty there for a while. Yeah, no, I'm happy. I feel like I'm a little more aerodynamic, a little more you suave. You look a lot faster. A little, a little yeah, more dude. just like mature. Like, I can't <laughs> tell you how like happy. <laughs> Like, I, there's this, well, maybe I'll try to find, anyways, there's pictures of, like, three years ago where I'm like, I literally can't believe that's me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. what am I thinking? Oh, I, got, I got called a she at uh, the DMV line when I lived here last time, and really? I was like, I gotta cut yeah, my hair. Bro. I'm getting to that level now with my, my mullet, yeah. flexing on him with the COVID mullet right now. Yeah, hell yeah. No, you got the suave also. <laughs> you know. Do you, have, do you put any product in it, though? Oh, yeah, bro. I put um, some pomade some Hell cream yeah. pomade yeah i've been having to use a little uh whatever wax or yeah. stuff because yeah. it's so like you it looks like you have very thin hair we got and so i just walk hair, around yeah. and it's just in my shit oh bro. bro i have a hat in my pocket yeah and you know when yeah, it gets right. too windy i just put that thing on yeah no that's why i've tried but not using the hat um what else what else what else Art, dude. Art, yeah. What about art? <laughs> art, man. I want to talk about. I mean, this is so selfish of me. I want to talk about some technical shit about oil painting because I never get to talk great, about it. Dude. So let I me don't just, either, man. Yeah, I just want. I don't even know. I want to. Yeah. I mean, we could have looked at my setup, but like, do you have a specific palette you like to work with, like a certain amount of colors, or do you, do you, do you use a lot? I use a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I guess let me try and think about it. I really I don't think like about it a lot, and yeah. like brands of paints too. No, not even brands. I'm just like I. For me, example, I'll mm. go first. I just I like to actually use very limited palettes. Use Zorn, right? Yeah, Zorn yeah. a lot because yeah. I think I, I get sometimes very confused mm. and overwhelmed with the amount of colors. Yeah, and I try to focus on values. Foremost. Simplicity is always key for me. Yeah. Too. yeah, but then again, the like Zorn, Zorn is titanium white, um, yellow ochre, cadmium red, mm. and. Um, ivory cobalt? black oh yeah ivory oh right black, right because right, the black yeah. acts like almost a blue it's a blue black yeah um when using that yeah it helps color harmony and you w focus on values but mm -hmm. it can get very muddy very quickly yeah and you lose vibrancy and like chroma oh uh, yeah unless you're extremely surgical with mixing and not that's mixing super the colors. traditional yeah yeah but so but yeah i i like to use limited colors but i'm just curious about like what what you go with or if you have so some setup not that my it's process strict. with uh, the paintings i do which I usually chop it up in Photoshop mm. and then I'll put it in. What do you mean Procreate. chop it up though? Like all my paintings right now are referencing like fine art, like high contemporary artists, right. I guess. Yeah. Um, so like my most recent one, which is probably finished by the time this podcast comes out. You're I'll, doing I'll crazy see. shit, bro. Yeah, it's dude. So cool. I'm riding a, a robot dinosaur right now, okay, but that it's one? Uh, based off of uh, Hajime... So yeah, something. Nailed so, it. Yeah, no, killed it. <laughs> oh gosh, I definitely know that. But so I, anyway, just to fast forward. So I take whatever painting I'm doing, put it in Procreate, and then I just use the color dropper tool. Okay. And I try and find like the three or you know three or four like kind of base colors. Oh, interesting. Um, and then I base like the colors I put on my palette mm -hmm. from that. So it's different every time. Wow. Um, but I'd say my go-to's. I always have some. Alizarin Crimson. Yeah, one of my Always favorites. have some um, yellow ochre, mm -hmm. titanium white. I just got into ivory black. Cool. I used to be umber or burnt umber and uh, ultramarine. ultramarine. Yeah, yeah. I, almost, I almost always do that except yeah. for Zorn. I've always I was taught don't Me use black, too. mix a black. Me too. Yeah, and so I like I that. Just recently started breaking that, cool. and I, I like it. Yeah, you know. Nice. Um, yeah, you can get into trouble if you let it take over your palette. Totally. Which, I think that's kind of why maybe both of us were taught to do the I other think so. way. I think so. So it doesn't get too muddy it's when you're kind of It's too easy to just destroy colors yeah. with the black. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. And I started using these like 50 cent brushes off Amazon that are just horrible because oh, like yeah. I learned that I just will never be good at cleaning my brushes. Oh, me too, bro. And yeah. if anyone has any tips, so let yeah. me know. It's because hard, bro. I feel really bad. Like, I just trash them. I'll yeah. literally use them. They'll dry up. Sometimes they'll break when I use them. Oh, yeah. They're so bad, yeah. you know. But it does go to show, like, you don't need the best No, equipment, definitely right? not. Definitely not. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it's, it's kind of different every time. But those are my go-tos. Lately, I've been using a lot of uh, CAD yellow, and I need to switch to... 
I think it's um, not Naples yellow. A different yellow. I've never used like poisonous. Naples yellow. I've literally used <laughs> yellow ochre or cadmium lemon or something. Oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah. But so again, also, and maybe people are just snoring, but this is music to my fucking yeah, yeah. ears. Like oh, dude. Ala Prima versus drying yeah. sessions. Because you are doing crazy. Now, hopefully we're putting up screenshots mm. shots of your work. Because like these are pretty big compositional pieces. Mm. Like it's not just portraiture like I'm doing super simple stuff i mean i've done a couple other biggers but you are totally doing massively like big composition narrative stuff like you writing a fucking dinosaur or yeah. you inside <laughs> yeah. a crystal by the way what yeah. artist was that based off that was people okay people because yeah. I, I think i know an other artist who does similar stuff in like desert scenes he's amazing mm. what's his name bro the worst I don't know, man. It's the it's the bearings and the name recall. Oh yeah, Worst I have none traits. of it. I have none of it, man. But anyways, so <laughs> like in those, the I have to break down those, especially those complex scenes. Like I would have to, for me, break that down into so many different stages and sections. I don't know. That's just how I work or I've learned. But you're mm -hmm. saying that you kind of just go right in and just a la prima rip it, which means yeah. wet on wet for people. So who, who I. Know. Doing commissions and stuff in New York, I found out that the the way to paint basically any photo, you know, when it really comes down to it, is just kind of zoom in, you know, color drop, like I said, like four or five colors. Like, for instance, if I'm painting the sky, mm -hmm. I'll look at the cloud and say, like, oh, that's the purple I'm going to use, that's the orange I'm going to use, that's the yellow, and then white. And then I'll just have all those colors on my palette. Mm. And then I always work uh, dark to light, okay. generally. I do that too, yeah. Um, except when I'm painting reflective things, I learned it, it works better to paint light to dark uh. because the white kind of gets tainted. Like, you keep it really crisp. You want those, like, really I see, bright like reflections. Those blow up, the blow-up dog or the yeah. famous whatever. Mm -hmm. What is it? I know that one. Do... Uh, I actually don't even know what you're talking about. So the blow up like dog. Oh, the Jeff Koon. Jeff Koon. Yeah, yeah, Damn, yeah, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Oh, amazing, dude. So that's an example maybe of reflecting thing you're uh -huh. talking about? Uh -huh. Okay, I see. Um, but yeah, I'll, I just kind of go right in. I, I work like background to foreground. Mm -hmm. Like I draw okay. it all out. Right. I do project yeah. shamelessly, you know. No, dude, I mean, yeah. you're, I mean. I haven't gotten any like drawback for that. Dude, and people, I mean, it's always a conversation. Especially of, like, if they see your work, bro. And like your, your history of your work. Like if you're just a beginner and you're projecting mm -hmm, something right. like, okay, maybe it's, you would probably learn more. It's a great point. But no, dude, I think it's, it's a tool. It's a utility yeah. to help you execute your job. I think it is important to learn without projecting Me too. just to have, cause there are times where you start painting and you know you lose your underdrawing, and then you got oh, to yeah. uh, you got to fall back on your skills. You either know where things go, or you don't, mm -hmm. you know. And so exactly. So you got it's hard to learn that way. But I grew up super traditional, mm -hmm. like yeah. You you yeah. have the weathered experience. You, you know, like you said, if you lose the lines. But I think mm -hmm. it's totally valid, Espec dude, especially for those crazy compositions, like. Thank you, man. But it's like you can't, you have to have that rubric. Like you can't just be going in with yeah, those crazy I mean, shits. Yeah, I'm sure some people doing. could. Yeah, I'm not going to waste my time. No, exactly. You know? Like I feel like it would triple the amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Um, which there are cool things to just like going straight at it. And I try to do that every like month, mm -hmm. like just do something fun. Yeah. Just to keep myself sharp. And then it's more like kind of a conversation with the surface. Like mm -hmm. you can, you know, change things as you go. You don't feel so like. Like, you know, a Xerox machine. Yeah. Like, you no, know, I hear you paint by paint numbers. By number, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's what I do. I'll just kind of work background to foreground, mm -hmm. fill it in, fill in the sky and okay. the, the ground. <laughs> but are you doing like, you're, so you're not letting any layers dry? You're not going back to add like final tonal values, like super highlights, or is you're doing all this at the same time? Or are you going back yeah. ever? I mean, sometimes I go back. I. I mean, I have pretty bad ADD, mm. you know? And also, you paint very fast, like we were talking about. Yeah, I paint fast. Which is fast. a bad or good thing, I'm just saying. It's like, a, it's a trait that I think I'm yeah. the opposite. I think well, I'm... it's like a race. It's like, I am going to lose interest in this. Oh, really? You know, you like, I'm so? going to lose interest in, wow. like, a week. Wow. So I need to just get it out while I'm excited about it. Holy and it's like, you know, I'm sure you do know how it is where, like, when you really get, like, hyper-focused mm -hmm. and you have, like, a 12-hour day of, yeah. like, you know, State, like, bug-eyed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... I, it's like a race, you know, and it's not always fun. You know, sometimes I'm like, God, I just got to get this done, and especially because it is wet on wet. Mm -hmm. It's like I have this palette mixed right now, mm -hmm. 
and it's not going to be the same when I mix it again tomorrow. You're right. I mean, that's true for sure. It'll be just a little bit yeah. different and probably nobody will notice, yeah. you know, but I'll feel uh, like... I, I understand. Yeah, the, ra the race, the internal race. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, because that's so... Because my, my real goal, honestly, I mean, not just for the studio, but like in this transition, like I'm really trying to transition to big compositions and do really big mm. paintings. I was just actually talking, I don't know if you know Proko, Stan Proko Panko, um, online guy. YouTube guy? Yeah. Sounds he's, familiar. He's a big like instructor. Anyways, mm. I did a collaboration video with him. Is this the YouTube collab piece? Yeah. Dude. The Proko one right there. Yeah, Proko. You know Proko, bro. Do I? He's a huge YouTuber. Anyways, oil, okay. he's like a fine okay. arts. Anyways, yeah. I was talking with him. Oh, my God. I just lost what I was thinking. What did you just say? What we were talking about? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> no, we were talking about... Yeah, um, my bad. We were talking about the process or the speed. Oh, or yeah, the what, speed what, what, and what, just, like, being in a race with yourself. Oh, okay, okay. We were talking about, yeah, the comp... So, oh, okay. So, I got it. I got Hell it. Hell yeah, dude. Fucking found it. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. 80% sure. of, like, the work I do is actually more, like, sketching, oil painting mm. sketches or oil painting portraits, like, just practice. Sure. And only 20% of that time allocated to oil painting is really, like, big executed paintings. Mm -hmm. Like the um, like the King Arthur, or I did that. Oh, like, dude, I love ball. that yeah. painting, by the way, dude. Thanks, bro. And so, like, I love that. It's like a full, like, I start to finish, fully finished, mm -hmm. whereas, like, like I said, 80% is really sketching. And I mm. want to really switch towards doing way more fully executed big pieces, narrative compositions. Like, I have that photo studio kind of set up to do... Really awesome photo shoots to hire yeah. models to yeah. have them pose and dress yeah. up to do big ass awesome paintings like you do yeah. because like I'm just hungry for it and not that I couldn't do that in my old studio yeah I guess I just wasn't in the mindset or I wasn't ready or I, I don't know but um, I I'm just so I love your work I think it's so fun dude. it looks so fun you have no idea how much this means coming from yeah. you dude bro like, I fucking love your shit bro that's why, like it's not only are we like similar, but you're also an awesome artist. Cause there are some other artists who are like, oh, I paint, I fucking splatter my poop mm. on the painting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I heard recently someone actually did like shit on a gallery floor and call that art. And I was like, you know what? The world is crumbling. <laughs> His face right yeah. there. <laughs> the world is crumbling, yes, bro. mint that as an NFT. So Let's like make that, some that fucking should, money. There should be a difference between <laughs> physical art and yeah. conception. Of just like the human psychology, which that might fall under because whatever. And I'm not ripping on that. Maybe that would strike yeah. something in me if I saw that in person and yeah. I would have a crazy Yeah, awakening. I try to stay open minded about me too. it. Me too. Well, I never try to be a hater. And I yeah. feel like sometimes I do become an elitist hater. Oh, yeah. I mean, we work hard to, to develop the technical yeah, skills. Yeah, no, that's true. You have to have really a balance. Hard. But no, yeah. I, I need to be, um, I try to be humbled a lot. And being called a dark wizard online helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, uh, yeah, 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 commenting about my nose yeah. and shit. And I'm like, you know what? I needed this. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I do a thing where every like couple months, I'll just have all my followers roast me. Really? Dude, That's it's so smart, humbling. Bro. Dude, That's they awesome. roast me, dude. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll have to look up some of the comments, but there was one that was like so in depth. It was like, your multi dimensional narcissism makes you. So, you know, just like really Whoa. like diving in, like, I was like, Jesus, Jeez. I was like, Thanks. goodness gracious, like, I don't know, man, like, but, Damn. but then, you know, there are some that are like, you look like an idiot, you yeah. know, and I'm just like, oh, thanks, oh, <laughs> like, that's a good. Pie. yeah, a little bit lighter yeah. that are like, just, you know, roasting. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, that, it's, yeah, I've. I never ever I like I said I always try to champion anyone being creative anything even like Big abstract time. art like the thing I try to compare it to is like I'm just a fan of art and like I want to be an ambassador for mm -hmm. creativity and anything creative and like say you go into like a Michelin star restaurant you know like you mm. know it's the best of the best it has amazing food but yeah. maybe on the menu there's an octopus squid. And it's like, I'm not going to order that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Because maybe yeah. I don't like octopus. Right. But I know that this restaurant is amazing and yeah. that it's great, but that's not for me. No that, octopus. That's what I try to think of, like, for a lot of art. Like, mm. abstract paintings or, like, I don't know, any other style that maybe perhaps isn't my speed. It's like... Like, my sisters, I keep bringing up my sisters, but they'll ask me if I like this or this because they're interested in my opinion, and I'll be like, no, that's not for me. But it doesn't mean, like, I don't respect or, oh, yeah. like, dislike right. the idea. It's like, mm. that's just not m my flavor. 
Yeah, you exactly. know, it's like this artist could be a super nice person, first of all, really hard working. Yeah. Maybe he's really well trained in all sorts of other arts, like Picasso. People know yeah. Picasso is like the real, most real deal fucking painter of all yeah, time, but he just time. chose to do all this other stuff. But like, you know, it's just not for me. I, I hear you, man. That's Big what time. I, I try to yeah, get across. You know, everyone has taste in every regard. Yeah. I think it's okay, you know, to not like something. Totally, know, but like, I, I feel like I don't. I feel like I sometimes sound like an asshole or I rip oh, on abstract Oh, not at all, painters. dude. I feel like you're pretty. You know, <clears throat> dude. I hear my non-artist friends like, like yeah, so no, people, unfiltered oh, that some I'm people, like. I try to keep them around too, you know, yeah. because it's like I like to have the the fine art take and then like yeah. the layman take, right. yeah. and you know. I try to, uh, you know, keep it, keep it light and everything. I want it to be immediate. I want people to yeah. see it and have that immediacy, which is why I like your work so much because it's like, boom, like loud, yeah. colorful. Yeah. This is it, right. deliberate. Yeah. You know, it's like you are trying to say something. Sure. Yeah, and th that's exactly it. Yeah. I mean, I just want, like you said, I just want people to react. And yeah. It's it's all about right, and it's such a weird because like it's. It's different than, I don't know how, like math or science, like every, every creative outlet, writing, movies, music, it's like, it's, it's in this realm of subjectivity. So yeah, there is oh, no yeah, right everything. or wrong, which is so crazy, yeah. but there are, you know, there is LeBron James who is mm -hmm. the best, you know, there is fucking <laughs> uh, Vermeer, you yeah, know, yeah. there is Beyonce who's like singing or, but like yeah. within that there is still subjectivity. Yeah. And so like the most famous pop singers aren't, the most talented piano players, you know, it's because oh, yeah. people like their music the best or even artwork, you know, like cause people like cause isn't the best draftsman. He's a real deal, amazing artist, yeah. but he isn't nearly as good as some other guys at these ateliers or whatever. It's yeah. like, so there's that subjectivity within the craft and not just being the best draftsman or the best singer or the best videographer, you know, means, mm you know, you're going to pull the, the hearts of the public. The public. I don't know, bro. I'm fucking ranting. I'm sweating. Are you sweating, oh, yeah, bro? Yeah, we're, 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 I'm we're, still trying to rip my boy. Oh, thank you, bro. I love you. I should have brought your Dean box. Dean sent oh, me dude, a box. Me, um, when I broke my leg, we exchanged gifts. We did. Like old pen pals. <laughs> And he sent me this wonderful box <laughs> he labeled was so adorable. with his shorts and all of his branding yeah. with Dude, some I'm glad awesome you brought things. that up because I got something oh for you. Oh my god! This is a, one of my broccoli dolls. No Go ahead and way, open it up. bro! Come yeah, on, broccoli. So this, so this is, is yeah. This explain is a, it. Yeah, this is a one of one broccoli no, companion. Dude. This is based. It's actually funny you just mentioned cause too. Yeah. So I, t I based this off of a uh, cause doll, uh, but I gave it a different face, like a broccoli face. So I threw in, I don't remember if these are shorts or a jersey. Wow, dude. Yeah. This is so awesome. I got bro. you the uh, Brock League jersey. And then the uh, this is a one-of-one -one collaboration with my girlfriend's brand, Bioglitz. So Hell this one yeah, is super dude. special, man. I love you. Thanks, yeah, man. Yeah, of course, dude. Is, oh, my this God. This is awesome. <laughs> like, dude. Yeah, you rock, dude. I love I this. To. I, I am going to have to give you something to go home with, or maybe I'll send it. But dude, this Yeah, is no, I'll up. take it all. <laughs> you can choose. They're all for like, you. Dude, I didn't give you that for nothing, man. This What's is it? fucking no, dope, okay. dude. Thank you. I remember you yeah. making these, and you did the whole um, like silicone molding yeah. and all that. I love that shit, dude. Yeah, hell I love thank the you, man. Hands-on cool shit. I mean, it's yeah. not very like painterly, but I, I love crafts. Yeah, I love crafts. Yeah, dude, it rocks. Like it's it's a fun process. Honestly, this is kind of easy. Like I just took a. Uh, I'm leaking my process here. It's, <laughs> but yeah. I took a. Uh, um, knockoff cause doll yeah. for like you know 20 bucks just remolded the face with like sculpty mm -hmm. you, you know that like, yeah no i remember mold. i think you shared some of the process oh yeah right? okay yeah Instagram. you probably saw i it. think i saw some of it um, yeah so then, yeah you took you took this as the body of cause yeah exactly of cause's character and then you mm -hmm. sculpted your broccoli yeah change the face a little bit and then just silicone mold fill it with plastic and gonna try and make a whole bunch of these I've only released seven of them. Right, I know. You did a couple orange ones, right? Some orange yeah. and some yellow ones. You're actually watching my gram, bro, dude. I watch that shit. shit all the time, yeah. bro. I don't follow many people on Instagram. Like, I, yeah. try to, I really try to purge a lot. Like, every month I try to purge. Yeah. 
my social media because like mm. my life is social media and like yeah. I think it's like super toxic. Oh, it is, dude. I delete Instagram like every other day. And like I have to be on it and like yeah. the numbers do matter for like yeah. my business and stuff know, and it, it's stupid you. to not be on top of it, but like it's a lot. And mm -hmm. so in terms of consuming cuz I also fucking love consuming. Like I watch mm -hmm. so many YouTubers. I don't watch Netflix. Mm. Like I never watch shows. I watch YouTube, bro. Yeah, I'm like born and raised YouTube. Yeah, you're dying. I, I love movies. Um, hell yeah, I'm putting this on right now. <laughs> no but, Netflix um, or anything, dude. No, I watch some Netflix, yeah. but like I, it's it's all YouTube, bro. And so like even social media. And like I, I watch TikTokers. I know that's like embarrassing. Like I just love. Oh, that. dude, I love TikTok. And so what I'm saying is, it's like I watch it <laughs> too much. Yeah. And so I need to back down. Yeah. Okay. I hear and you. like, it's, uh, so I purge, but like the people I follow on Instagram are the people I fucking follow and like want to learn more about like my favorite yeah. artists or like my really close friends. Wow. Yeah. It's such a different world in these headphones. <laughs> I know, dude. It's like, <laughs> welcome to this That's private room. Crazy. Yeah. But dude, this is so sick. I love you, bro. Thanks so much. Oh yeah, dude. This is so dope. Yeah, dude. Of course. The least I'm going to need this do. here in these very yeah. sweaty studio. That's it's getting gonna hot be out here, life. man. Yeah, right, had you guys to. sweating? I feel better after the. All right, the, good. Uh, yeah, I'm maybe I'm just in there. Yeah, yeah, nice watch. Right, so you too, dude. Fucking ring. Thanks. Cute, dude. Yeah, me and Chris have similar rings, actually. Oh yeah, look yeah. at you all. I Kel gotta step it up. Celtic boys. I don't know if it's Celtic Dang. or not. Damn. Um, yeah, bro. What else? We got probably like 10, 15 more minutes. Where are we running? One ten. One ten. Yeah, let's do like let's maybe wrap it up soon. Yeah. I mean, we're ripping. Anything else you want to say to the public? Um, Any rants you've been itching to just exhume from eat your body? Eat broccoli. Eat more broccoli. Yeah, D Dean loves broccoli. I could probably use that. I mean, Everyone I, could, man. Dude, when... I don't know. Okay, I, I want to... We'll talk about this as just an ender. Maybe this mm. is just dead air. But, dude, you... During our leg fiasco, like, you really... Wim Hoffed out, right? Oh, dude, I love talking about this. You this Wim Hoffed yeah. out. Yeah, I did, man. I Which, did. And Wim Hof is, maybe you can explain. Yeah, more. so Wim Hof, if you all are unfamiliar, is um, he's this ice man. He hiked the Appalachian Mountains in his underwear. Mm -hmm. And uh, he basically does this breathing technique that like warms up your body and is like really good for mental health and things like yep. that. Um, so I got big into that. Uh, when the leg was broken, I was actually already kind of doing it before, but then when my leg was broken, I was just like ice bathing yeah. and Wim Hofing. Yeah. And what it does is you basically like, you almost hyperventilate, mm. which isn't like a huge sell for it. I right, like it. right. <laughs> but that. like, yeah. you almost like convince your body that like you're going to die. Yeah. You just breathe in 30 times and out 30 times, like really intensely. And then you push all your air out mm. and then you hold your breath. Right. And you can hold your breath for like, two minutes because your body is so like oxygenated. Right, 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 right. Um, and you go into this different place. It's like super meditative. You close your eyes and you know, you can kind of like sometimes see colors and things like that. Crazy, it's, like, yeah. it's almost like, like a hack to meditation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it uh, has all these health benefits. Like it, they did a study and they injected people with E. coli and they had like a, a control group and then like a test group yeah. um, that was all trained doing like the Wim Hof breathing technique. Mm -hmm. And they, literally rid their bodies of e coli by doing this breathing technique that's wild because it like floods yeah, your body with crazy. all these like really nice chemicals <laughs> and like it's a very woo woo idea but when yeah. you put in experiments like that it's like insane well like, so what results. happened so i wasn't supposed to be able to walk for six months yeah like my leg is pretty shattered i know, know? And, uh, but after, I think it was like three months, I think I cut the time in half. Dude. They were like, oh. I remember. Yeah. I um, remember. And I feel like, again, my injury, we, they were both gnarly, but yours was definitely like more dramatically gnarly. And I feel like I remember you recovering almost faster than me, or like you maybe were weight bearing before me. I mean, obviously our surgeries were a little different, yeah. but I just remember and it's so funny in the package I sent you. I sent you like those bone pills. Oh yeah, oh, I took those. Yeah, <laughs> but and you were like, like, I don't know if these really. Yeah, I was like, dude, he's fucking doing ice ice baths with yeah. his like noodle leg. It's like, what are these pills going to do for him? Yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. Clearly got the fucking like breath on his back, but I just I feel, I feel like it definitely helped. Like I have no idea. I'm not you, but like yeah. from what it's like uh, the I think didn't so. your doctors also say something like, wow, like. 
you're recovering pretty fast. Not right? really. No? You know, oh, they were just kind of like, oh, you're walking already. <laughs> really? And I was like, yeah, you know, and, you know, I, I really like the story of it. I don't really know if I'm like embellishing because they, I, all I remember is they said six months. You can't walk for six yeah. months. Yeah. You know, well, that's um, what I and I was, I was walking like, at three months and he's like, oh, wow, you can walk. Yeah, you, you can keep the crutches here. He's like a super cut and dry doctor. Yeah. Too, so like, so then it's like, wow, you know, I think cool. I think I did really good. I highly recommend the technique. Um, the ice baths have to you know, help. I mean, the like, ice baths are super good for you too. Yeah. Um, with those, which by the way, we got cold boy summer every Sunday oh, in yeah. Louisville. If you all are in Louisville, Kentucky, hey, we, we have a bunch of people over and we take ice baths. Really? Um, yeah. yeah man, see with your fun. roommates. Who What's your other roommate with the big beard and then uh, Matt? Matt. Yeah. yeah nice. Matt uh, Wolford. Well, I almost forgot his name. That's cool. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, he rocks, man. He's also like, he literally looks like Wim Hof. Dude. Yeah, no, he does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's super wholesome. We just like sit in a circle and Sundays. breathe and then we take baths. Yeah, that's smart, bro. <laughs> I got to be on it. I got to be more on my health game. I got to eat yeah. broccoli and get in some cold ass water, bro. It feels good, man. And honestly, you know, I'm not like the healthiest person beyond that, but yeah. it's just something that is, it can, it can never hurt to eat more vegetables no, in general. It definitely can. So I like to encourage people I to like do to take. So. Like, I'll take a normal, like, hot shower and then try to end as cold as I can go. Yeah, that's, I do that every day. Yeah, yeah. I try to do that. Yeah. Just be like, because it feels good after almost being really hot in the shower, but yeah. then also I know it's like shock your body, wake up a little, natural coffee, blah, blah, blah. And I like it, but I don't do the great, dude, the ice bath, it's like, I'm so skinny, bro. Like, when I've been in a cold lake, so <laughs> like, it's, too. I know, yeah, it's true. But <laughs> yeah. like, it, like, I yeah. can't breathe, bro. Yeah. Like, I can't yeah. even feel function well yeah i mean that's like the benefit is like your body right. kind of goes into shock and so like all the muscles and organs inside of you start working overtime oh, so God. as you're just sitting there which all you once you like get your breathing under control it's kind of a breeze like you just have to like yeah and do you get used to it you say is like there's some sort of tolerance almost would you say i i yeah i think so, you think so? yeah it's easier for me now mm. i wonder if it's like my body is actually used thing, to it or it's like psychological or Wim Hof, thing. dude he does like fucking in the <laughs> arctic like <laughs> yeah yeah every day he's not like well it's like it's he's like chilling it's yeah oh dude i feel like he like swims underwater it's in crazy, ice just bro. to like get i think home. the yes there you know yes theory on youtube oh yeah yeah they like did a day or 24 hours with wim hof and they were doing all his crazy shit where they just like march in a, he has like a he has like an industrial freezer oh for like you know like a supermarket <laughs> in his <laughs> backyard and Dude. what they do is they just march they just yeah. march in a circle in the freezer for like two hours yeah, it's incredible. It's like what <laughs> Dude, and these guys gets, are like yeah. dying. But It'd be then, so funny to take some of his videos and put like really dark music. Yeah, behind. dude. He'd be like, <laughs> yeah, like be a so cold cult cult be, yeah. yeah, but he seems just like the nicest. Like I don't know. Yeah. obviously. Ah, dude, he's enjoying life, you know, and, and harmless, if not yeah. extremely beneficial. Yeah, I think he's also super rich. You know what I mean? Really? From doing all this? Oh, stuff. probably. Yeah, his like, meditation shit. Yeah, I looked it up, and like a um, workshop with him is like. Four thousand dollars a week or something Holy per poop. person or something crazy, Jeez, you know? Wow. And he's, he's probably, cranking them out, dude. Like he's yeah. I don't think he does the business. I listened to a podcast and I think his his son does his business stuff. Really? But yeah, I think he's like racking it in I too. Mean, so shout out. I mean, he's just eating like spaghetti and drinking Heineken's also though, which is crazy. Is he know? really? I is think just... so. That's the crazy thing. It's like people are like he's like the healthiest crazy man. <laughs> yeah. But his diet is like spaghetti and Heineken. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> Which is like crazy. That's gold. Swimming <laughs> under the Arctic fucking glaciers. Be so healthy you can eat whatever you want. That's like That's amazing, bro. You know what I mean? Kudos to him. Man. Yeah, kudos to him. But yeah, Dean was a little Wim Hofy and that mm -hmm. was inspiring. And like you also got off your meds, I think, before I did, and I was kinda yeah, scared. That was, about they're that. scary. They man. are scary, yeah. bro. And I was scared that I was gonna have bad withdrawals from them. Anyways, we don't have to go that rabbit hole, but yeah. You were a champ, bro, and I don't know if I could have made the surgery craziness without you, bro. Oh, me too, we're man. leg snappers. Hopefully, you'll oh, be dude. all right with your screws coming out. I got my screws out, like, yeah. pretty recently. Or did, not, it, or, did it make or, a difference for you? At, recently after the surgery. I think I mm. got it, like, two months after, mm. and it, I, I felt a difference. Yeah. Because they hurt, or I yeah. felt them. Mine hurt, too, yeah. man. Yeah. And, then, and they got out, and it felt better. I still yeah. have two in, and I don't really feel them. I mean, there's... It's weird. My, my hamstring is, like, always sore. Like yeah. I feel like my hamstring isn't like this part of the leg. Yeah. That tendon. Yeah. Isn't strong yet still. And it's been like a year and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. But you have that hip thing. I have a hip thing. Now. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. Like the, it's like a little bit crooked. I can't really run. Can you run? Yeah, I can run. I'm, I'm like almost a hundred percent. Yeah, you are. But yeah. it still is 
it gets sore. Like, I don't know yeah, how else to yeah. say it. Yeah, yeah. And I think it sore. always will. Like, yeah. I was just talking to my buddy Connor, and uh, he had the similar thing I had. I don't know if it was the same thing you had, too, but he wrecked his leg. Right. Really? And he had a full knee replacement and everything. Oh, my and, God. Like, He's doing pretty good. You know, he's, like, walking and, yeah. like, able to get by, no problem. But, yeah, I mean, he's, like, it'll never be the same. Dude, yeah, it's sad. I watch all the videos of my older self. I'm I do, too, Looking dude. at my natural, le- yeah. organic leg, I'm just, dude. like, I miss you. I have such, like, <laughs> runner's envy now, yeah. like, walking past the parks in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, look at these kids. Can you not run? So- I can't really, like, really? my, my, I think it, it's the screws in my knee, like, kind of, like, angle my leg, like, outward a little bit. Holy penis. So it's, like... It like bends differently, you really? know. I mean, I can still like trot around, like, yeah. and I never really ran anyway, right, right. so it's like that much of a hindrance to my life. Yeah. But it's like, dang, I want to run, you know. And I think I'll get there. Like, I've been. I think you will. I yeah. mean, you have to. I mean, in terms yeah. of some athletes, bro. Yeah. Have crazy injuries, and they're playing full sports, sports. Yeah. For their yeah. whole life after. Yeah. So I would assume yeah. that hopefully you'll be a hundo. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Me neither. I don't think I'll be a hundo, but yeah, you know no, what I mean? So I'm got, already, like, pretty stoked just having not walked for, like, so long too, and been, like, limping yeah. that I'm, like, oh, I can, like, get around New York without, like, too much pain. It's, like, yeah. kind of awesome. I know. Shout out. Yeah, the humble pie, bro, is just yeah. one of the biggest slices you'll ever get. Oh, it was not super. Very grounding like experience. Months. Yeah, that shit was fucking not fun. Now we got that cool, like, wisdom to us. Like, oh, they've been through yeah, some shit. You know? <laughs> I'm a fucking cyborg, my dog. We are. Yeah. I, I mean, your it, it shit was is like, crazy. We'll show the x rays. Your shit yeah. is crazy, bro. Gnarly, yeah. What yeah. is that wireframe? Good question. Yeah. <laughs> I show people and they're like, who did your surgery? Yeah, like, right? the Terminator? Dr. Like, Seuss, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> but yeah, it's amazing. There's, there's all sorts of screws. And I told the guy, I showed you that I have like a screw kind of like sticking out. This mm-hmm. is how like cut and dry my surgeon was. I was like, this is like almost poking out of my leg. Yeah, like, you're like, hey, you way too far. And doc? he was like, I'm a physician, not a magician. I was like, Jesus Christ. Oh my He's God. like, you have very skinny leg, you know? I'm like, oh my God, yeah. no, dude. Roasted yeah. on top of that. That's like, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was a mess. Um, well, he's cool. I mean, whatever. He put it yeah. back together. I know? was so nervous for my surgery because I was still like in shock, crazy mode. And I thought it was like the craziest surgery. Like my leg was like hanging off. Oh. And so I was asking the doctor, who's like my hometown doctor, because mm-hmm. I went from New York to Connecticut, and I was like, like, have you done this surgery before? Like, is it like crazy gnarly? Yeah. I'm thinking it was like some like spinal replacement. He was he just looked at me so calm. He's like, I've done thousands of these oh, exact yeah. surgeries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, my surgeon said that too, 500 something a year, which is like multiple a day. <laughs> so I was like, what? Yeah, dude, what the yeah. fuck? Orthopedic surgery, bro. It this reminded yeah. me of some bones. All right, maybe we'll end it, but yeah. that was a wonderful conversation. Yeah, I think we covered most of it, man. It's most of it, sick. but everyone should obviously go follow Dean. The socials will be in the description, but what is it on Instagram? Dean, Dean Sachi? Dean Sachi underscore official. And we didn't really talk about your live streams, but you do all these crazy live streams. and Yeah, so that's, yeah. Is that your main place to follow you on Instagram to get hyped up? Instagram for sure, And you're yeah. going to start a YouTube channel after oh, you leave tw- here today, Twitter. right? Yeah, th- honestly, yeah. You have to, bro. I feel like Why all the not? signs are kind of pointing in that direction. I love being on camera. You might as well, might not. I mean, I you just, might I'm as so well. bad at editing, you know? It's, it's hard, like, bro, but you just learn it. Give it two weeks, bro. Or have your friends help you or other people. Is it, this is where we got I Sage behind my here, boy homie. Sage. Shout out to Sage yeah, Delaney. Like, yeah. Louisville native, he or rocks. anyone. People want to help you out, bro. You like yeah. have like-minded people. They do a couple things here and there. I have the homie Chris now who's helping yeah. me with stuff. Like, yeah, it doesn't need to be just you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, or I'm starting to feel like, that, that more and more. You could do just you, just your phone. Like, I yeah. don't even do enough. I'm trying. I used to. You could see it on the the whiteboard over there. It says yeah. the top left TikTok. So funny, just to, dude. Just to remind myself. Dude, our, our whiteboards are so similar to how like, disorganized they are. It's just my signatures, bro. It's just like, Oh, really? Just oh, nothing. okay. I thought it was like... And then TikTok in the corner. TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I just have like Go International written on my thing. At go the International? Top. Like what? I'm like, trying to go international. Oh, I just like, want to like... Travel? No, no, no. Like I just want my art to be shown internationally. Oh, that's cool. Soon. Um so that's like a long term. Well, your shit's thing. awesome, bro, and I can't wait to keep looking. I know you're working on a big series right now. It's June now. Maybe this podcast will come out in 2025, and you'll have a lot of more work. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> sick, man. But yeah. I know you're working on some crazy stuff, and I can't wait to see more. Big time, yeah. dude. So is this the first podcast? First podcast, legit podcast ever. It will be the first one to be released. It might be released in later in August, but mm. this is a ceremonial. 
Wait, we can press some of these. We got sound effects, oh, oh, dude. Yeah. Chris oh, might have to spray them. Some random ones. The first one. Ow. First podcast, Sage, yeah, baby. Yeah, it's the chat. first. Dean. Welcome to the first podcast. It's your boy, Dean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good, 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 good. Hold it. Woo! Yeah. Good on Pod Dean, everybody. Yeah. Broccoli. Thank you. Follow Thank you so on much. Instagram. I'm flattered. All right. Well, thanks for coming, man. Yeah, dude. This is sick. Friendship this is so forever. Fun. This is like the first time we've met, but like, like I said, we have so much in common. I can't wait to just keep it up. Yeah, me too, man. And me obviously, too. come through anytime at all. And if I'm ever in Louisville, I don't know why I would really be other than visit you, honestly. Come by and visit, but, man. Yeah, I would like to do some Sunday cold sessions. Yeah, Isn't Sunday co- cold boy now? summer is pretty hot. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's really hot. All yeah, right. it's pretty hot. All, all right, right, peace out. This peace. is awesome. <laughs>